for joining, 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 joining. Here we go. Look at there. Here we go. Look at all these folks. Uh oh, Diana's here. Now we have to behave. Oh, oh man. <laughs> we can't talk smack now. Don't behave because of me. I oh, you know me. I behave anyway. In, and so I wanted to join in. Oh, hey, Roseanne. Lots of Lots folks. Of this is awesome. It is. Yes. yes. Look at everybody. Miss Sharon. In. Yes. Fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Look at everybody's here. Learn about Mr. Those Messina. Operations over people. I was telling, I was telling Vic, I just love when I see Dave's name on there. Dave's joining us today. And look, we got Carolyn too, and he doesn't get to join us as often anymore. She's doing amazing work out there, and now she doesn't get to join us. See how that is? <laughs> uh, hey, Diana, what's new? Is there any events coming up? <laughs> We I actually, I fly to uh, Wichita tomorrow. We have Joni Non Central up at, at KSU. Um, it's a little different. Mike O'Shea's leading um, oh, the, cool. the event, and we're going to do a full day just public safety, and then a half a day on agriculture, which will be Friday. So. Oh, neat. Yeah, so I'll be heading up there in the morning. But I had an hour, one hour, and I thought this is perfect because <laughs> Nick has been so supportive of us, just like you, Desi, and Sharon, all others, that the least I could do was pop in and and see everyone. Well, well awesome. Yeah, Droning On is a great event. I wish wish you guys could do it more, uh, but I understand. I know you've got time restraints and budget restraints and and fun stuff like that. But next September, right, at CSU, that's the plan? Double it up with the uh, Colorado State drum, flow, uh, drum Show? That's what we're hoping. We'll see what happens there. We have ideas and <laughs> kind of expand. You know, we did uh, Droning on California. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a, such a great success. And we kind of pulled away from the regional offices to host that. Um, and so we may continue on doing that type of thing. I'm, I'm even talking with the school for having a droning on Atlanta because there's oh, a cool. lot of potential there. And yes, we want to make things happen. That would be awesome. Um, and hopefully nobody from that group is on this call, but there's the Georgia Drone Pilots Facebook group where there is a whole lot of activity that goes on that is questionable. I was actually banned from that group because I pointed out and they let me back in. <laughs> That's wow. not I remember. <laughs> That's unusual for me to get banned from a Facebook group. We'll, we'll talk offline on that one. Yeah, we'll talk offline. <laughs> I'm I'm shocked, Vic. That had to be the first time that ever happened, right? I yeah, I think it might have been. <laughs> no, I take that back. I was banned from another group, but that was for personal reasons, and I won't go into who it was. Oh. Oh, well, I know the one that was held, the droning on in, in Fullerton was fabulous. It was so good. And the outreach that you're doing Huge. is amazing. So, yeah, very, very big. So Thank awesome. you. We have a good team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I love our Tuesdays. This is a fantastic uh a group of people that we have here today. I even see Ed. Ed, I haven't seen you in a while, so good to see you here today. Uh, I know everybody is Thank here. Thank you. Good for... to see you too. Yay! I I wonder how the weather always is for your getting out and flying in New York, right? <laughs> it start today is the first cold day. It's starting to get cold today. I was coming to work. I was like, "Ooh, this is different," <laughs> and everyone's wearing those. Everyone's wearing those jackets, you know, with like the fur around the rim and it's over their head. I'm like, oh, that's it. It's over. I'm wearing my vest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was snowing here overnight. And this morning it, we have snow in Chicago, but it's stopped now. Nice. Wow. So I'm trying I had to 10 inches at my house Saturday night. <laughs> so I'm trying to plan a trip over to the East Coast. And I'm like, man, you guys are having some yucky weather. I don't know if I want to go. I'm like in Southern California oh. right now. <laughs> Never come to the East Coast during the winter. This is, it, it gives you every reason to never want to come back. <laughs> Just come during the spring, uh, mm -hmm. summer, and fall. The winter, avoid it like like New Yorkers avoid Times Square. <laughs> <Just too late. laughs> there you go. 
Awesome. Well, I want to get the ball rolling because I know Vic has a lot to share and everybody's here to hear all about those operations over people. But first, I want to do a big shout out. Vic, congratulations. The award ceremony for the women in drones and the emerging tech in aviation. It was phenomenal. Sharon, thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for a phenomenal yeah. event. Yes. Yes, it was amazing. And it was good to see some of you there. And again, congratulations, Vic, and for everything that you and Kenji and did. And Kenji. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You and Kenji are amazing. And we we count on you. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Awesome. So uh, Vic Moss is here to share about operations over people and his waiver that he has gotten. And so I'm just going to bump it over right away to him. I'm going to make you spotlight, Vic. Uh, hey, wow, I'm big now. Um, thank you very much. And yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the waiver process. Uh, hopefully, you guys and gals. Um, I'm gonna use guys in the generic, non-gender specific form because that's how I talk. Um, <laughs> And and have had a chance to either look at the video and the stuff, or uh, or we will be able to now. Uh, can uh, uh, would you mind putting the link in the in the um, in the uh, um, whatever it's called chat? Those big words. Um, I put the link in the password. Perfect. I didn't want yeah, to put it. Perfect. In the link. Yeah, perfect. Well, no, I mean it, it's and honestly, um, if you're going to do this, do it quickly. Um, because hopefully by the end of the week, I'm going to have this out publicly. Uh, the first thing we did was we shared it with the DSPA members, and then we shared this with the uh, Pilot Institute members because they're a big, uh, big sponsor of ours. Um, and now y'all. So I uh, wanted to be able to do that. But um, as of right now, last I heard, there's 300 waivers in the queue in the waiver office. Not all ops over people. I mean, waivers, are it's, it's all encompassing. Um, and so make sure if you're going to do this, do it this week. Tell you what, I'll wait till Saturday or maybe Friday. Uh, to post this. So um, give you uh, women and drones folks who are here a chance to go ahead and get in the queue before it gets flooded, because I do expect um, once this is out to the general 107 flying public, it's going to get busier. So <laughs> we'll see on that because um, it is an incredibly useful waiver. Um, I've been able to use mine five times so far, four times, five times. I can't remember. Not yet being paid for it though, because I'm trying to get some proof of concept stuff set up. Um, the first thing I did with it was uh, fly uh, the CSU home game, um, their, their, their uh, first home game of the season. So uh, not only was it OOP, um, it was uh, in a division one football TFR. So that was kind of fun. Uh, but did a big draw, did a big flyback shot of the team entering the field and it was all on the, the, um, scoreboard and that kind of stuff so it was kind of fun uh flew a uh a um uh and i'll i'll answer all that here just a bit edward um and i i flew uh, a, a, a a um uh chili festival uh because somebody was doing a documentary on the chilies pueblo chilies in colorado so we did the chili festival flew over people in wind which we'll talk about and then also uh what a lot of people knew and saw was i flew the las vegas strip and um, flew over the strip and over the fountain and had all kinds of fun stuff like that to do. So fun to do, proof of concept. Um, the uh, Las Vegas strip shoot was during Commercial UAV Expo in Vegas, and uh, I was trying to get the FAA to come out and ramp check me, but Kevin said, I'm just too tired. I'm not going to deal with it. <laughs> so I wanted to come out and ramp check me because that would have been fun. Um, but anyway, so let's get into it. Um, First thing I'm going to do, let's see if I've been signed out of the drone zone because they will kick you out if you... Hey, I haven't been. Yay. And I know you can't see it. I just want to make sure um, I'm still logged on. Perfect. Okay. So let's share the screen because I don't want people to, I mean, I don't want people to actually to, to see my login information. So let's go to the drone zone. And so you guys can see my drone zone here, right? Okay. Let me move the silly task bar because I really don't like this. Thing. Hey, there it goes. Yay. Okay. So this is your 107 dashboard. Um, and a quick caveat, I went in today and checked all my active and realized I've got some I haven't updated yet with remote ID. So I got to go through and do that. Uh, I have not flown them yet. So um, it's not illegal at the moment. Anyway, okay, so back to this. And I don't know how many people here have applied for a waiver before. Um, it's a different process than it used to be back in the 107 29 days. And that's the uh, night ops days when we needed those. So I'm going to go over that very quickly because I am limited in time. So you go to your 107 dashboard, scroll down to Part 107 Waivers and Airspace Authorizations, 
which we'll talk about the difference of those in just a second. But here, these guys right here are really kind of what you want to look at um, as you do this. There'll be a couple different things. You've got the instructions, which will take you to an instruction page, a real quick little short um, three-page instruction page. That kind of gives you a little bit of information. Get rid of that. Um, then there's a webinar series, which is good. It's a little old, a little data, but it still works pretty good. The WESEG, wa wa Waiver Safety Explanation Guidance, WSEG, um, and then guiding questions, and then uh, specific evaluation information. That's another good one. It's a little bit longer. It's 14 pages. But for this particular waiver, let me scroll down, see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. I should have done this earlier. Um, here, operation. Whoop, that's not it. It's this one right here, operations over human beings. That's it. That's all they tell you for the instructions that has been published and stuff like that. So if you're doing one of the other ones, and we are going to be doing an EV loss waiver here, Kim and I are going to do that next couple months. Um, this is the one you want right here, waiver safety explanation guidelines and guiding questions. This will come in very important. And we'll talk about why in just a minute. So you click on that PDF and opens up your PDF. We're going to be doing operations over people. And then we're also going to be doing operations over moving vehicles. So these are the questions you're going to want to ask or answer. But first, let's start a process here. So um, go down to your 107 waiver on airspace authorization page and click create a new waiver. Okay, I'm going to go fairly fast. And this is in the video as well. Um, so I, I go a little bit slower in the video. So we'll have a Q&A at the end. I think we'll have time. I'll just make it super fast. So here you've got two options. Your operational waiver or airspace authorization. Operational waiver is what you want to apply for if you're trying to fly outside of 107 regulations. Airspace authorization is just simply if you want to fly either in an airport that is not Lance active, so DOD airports, some of the uh, private airports, uh, class, class D and class E, I believe, uh, E2. And then if you want to fly, let's say in a zero grid, or you want to fly 400 and a 100, or whatever, you're flying outside the UAS FM limits, then you either want to use uh, manual requests for Lance, um, or depending on the airport airspace authorizations. So, but we're going to do operational waiver. So you click operational waiver, start application, and it talks about con ops, and it asks you a whole bunch of different questions. And this is great. It used to be these questions weren't here, but the way it works now is, as you ask the questions or answer the questions, um, it tells you what waivers you need. So it's kind of cool. You're not guessing at this point. Um, time of day, that's the first thing, you know, just click them all. You want to fly daylight, you want to fly civil twilight, and you want to fly night. Now, as soon as I hit civil twilight, it says, are you going to be using anti-collision lighting? Yes, I am. So you don't need that waiver. What weight are you going to use? First thing you want to do is change this to grams because it's 380 weight, uh, grams. It's the weight of my waiver for the Mavic 3 Pro. Now I do have a modification in for the Mavic 3 Pro, but it's five more grams. The Mavic 3 Pro or Mavic 4 Pro, Mini, I knew I was gonna do that. Every time I say Mavic 3, just pretend I said Mini 3 or Mini 4 because I do this all the time. Uh, the Mini 3 Pro with prop guard, prop cage is what the waiver is for. My modification is for the Mini 4 Pro. Five extra grams, so there's a little bit of kinetic energy uh, transference, which is 1.01% more which we'll get into. So anyway, so change that to grams, 380 grams, unless you do want to do the Mini 4 Pro, and it should it should be accepted. Um, I've talked with them about it. It's just a matter of me getting through the queue to get my um, modification. It's eight, it's five more grams, and I'll go through the exact, uh, exact weights on that. So are you going to be transporting payload? No. Okay, fine. Your control station. This is a weird question. What is your control station? Your control station is a stationary vehicle. I don't know why they say stationary vehicle, but it is a stationary vehicle. You're not moving. So that's your only real option there. Are you going to fly line of sight? Yes, I am. Are you going to have the visibility, three statute mile visibility for the duration of the flight? Yes, I am. Now, here's where you ask for the actual UAS. Is it just a single aircraft? Yes. Will you give right of way? to all other aircraft in the sky. Yes, of course. Max ground speed for this, again, I'm gonna change this to meters per second. It's gonna be 10 because that's what my waiver in the, in the, in the uh, safety mitigations, that's the max speed I can do in my waiver. So 10 meters per second. Max altitude is gonna be 400. Again, you're not gonna be flying over 400. Um, if you wanna apply for an authorization to fly over 
you know, in a, in a, in a commercial or in a, in a controlled airspace, then you just go to the drone zone for the airspace authorization and um, add the waiver to it. I'm not going to get into that. It's fairly simple to do. Um, distance from clouds, are you going to be? Yes, sir. you're going to take care of that. Not a problem. Okay, here's where we get into the questions that are important to this one. Are you going to be flying over people? Well, yeah, that's the whole point. What is your operational category? And you're going to, you're recording this, so it's actually going to, you're going to put this out too, right? Right, Desi? Awesome. Awesome. So what is your operational category? Non-compliant. That's the whole point of this. It's non-compliant. Are you going to be over moving vehicles? Yes. Now, if you notice as I was doing this, um, these populated, these are my relevant waivers right here. I need to do 107.39 and 107.145. Hit next. And this kind of gives you a review of what you said. You want to make sure everything's right. Yes, it's right. Click next. Here's the important part as well. Okay, it comes up to the con ops, and these are the three, these are the two you're doing, these guys right here. But what you want to do is you want to name this waiver. And I'll tell you why in a minute. You can name it Bob, Cindy, Pete, George, whatever you want to name it, because all that matters is this is what you're going to refer back to when we do the next step. So I'm going to call this one WAD, Lemon and Drones, and then hit continue. And now it gets into responsible party. You can make yourself the only pilot. For me, that's what I'm doing. I'm the only pilot. Um, I'm not letting people fly under my waiver. Um, it's just something I've made the decision not to. Um, yes, that's my address. And if you don't, it's, I'm so easy to find my address and phone number. If you don't know how to use Google, that's your problem, not mine. Um, so I just click myself as the pilot. Okay, click next again. And now you need to get into the safety explanations for this one first, this one second, and then where do you want to fly? We're not going to do that right now. And I'll tell you why. If you start filling this out right now, the drone zone will time you out because it's going to take you a lot longer to fill it out than it is to actually write it in the drone zone. So we're actually going to go ahead and click out of all this fun stuff. Click out of that. Click out of that. Um, and I'm probably going to have to log back in. So I'm not going to quit Chrome because that'll kill me. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Um, any questions so far that we have in the chat? I'm not I'm not monitoring the chat, Desi. I'm assuming you are. There are several that have already. Oh, goody. OK. So if you want to ask about those. So OK, um, pull up the chat here. Asked about that. Oh, what drone did you use for the game? OK, it's a uh, Mini 3 Pro uh, with the uh, RC Pro controller because I have an HDMI out. Uh, the RC2, I believe, has a USB-C to HDMI out. I've been told that. I haven't checked that, so I'm not, I haven't verified that. Um, Alex, if I want to fly different drones with different weights, should I fill out multiple waivers? No, but um, you can put all your drones on a single waiver, but if one is denied there is a chance the entire one will be denied. Um, I do know somebody who's filled out uh, this particular waiver with a Nevada. Um, uh, and so I, whether they get it or not, I don't know. The ops over people waiver is all about kinetic energy transference upon collision. Um, so the heavier it gets, and David has a really good, <laughs> really, really good point, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, the more kinetic energy there is. So it's crawl, walk, run is the FAA's philosophy on waiver ex waivers uh, and other things. So crawl, walk, run. Um, right now, this is about, uh, I want to say a speed walk. <laughs> um, you know, the funny people that walk and do their little speed walking down the road, not so much anymore, but it used to be a big thing. Um, that's kind of where we're at. We're not quite running, but this is an incredibly useful waiver. Uh, there are limits to it, of course. And yes, David, uh, FPV guys and gals, um, that's really slow for FPV, which is not the point of the waiver, although hopefully we'll get there. I would love to see uh, the, the Avada um, get there, uh, but um, we'll see how it goes. If you've got an FPV uh, that has the, you know, that has got the uh, uh, the prop guards or the, the inducted fans, that kind of stuff, you can go ahead and try and do that, but you will have to do all your own calculations as far as kinetic energy. Uh, foot pounds of kinetic energy is the final goal for this. And well, you want it. I can. I can still calculate possible. one. I can still calculate one half mv squared. So I'm okay. Yeah, you you can probably do that in your head, but we know you. So <laughs> I can't do that. Then, I can't Dave? do that. Say what? <laughs> so we all go to Dave when we have a question. Yes. Yes. Dave's email address is. No, I won't do that to you. <laughs> there we go. Um, 
Okay, Edward, if the waiver for the Mini 3 Pro, which weighs less than 250 grams, it does not weigh less than 250 grams once you put the prop, uh, prop guards on it. And you, there are people out there who insist that a, a Mini 3 will not lacerate. The Mini 4 will not lacerate. I can guarantee from personal experience, it does. Um, I tried to hand catch mine. I was distracted at the last second. Totally my fault. And yeah, I, I, I lacerated the heck out of my thumb. I uh, actually lost a little bit of a tip of the thumb. Um, so it lacerates. So ignore those folks. Um, legally, you can try that. Um, but all I can say to that is you're the one making the decision under Category 1 drones. And if that's the decision you made and something happens, you better be right. That's all I can say to that. Um, I personally am a little uh, little more conservative in situations like that. So I will not fly without my prop, cards, uh, prop cages. Um, I do have the Mini 2 with the right battery, with the Japanese batteries and prop gauges, uh, but it doesn't have a remote ID. And so as soon as I put a module on it, I'm over 250 grams. So um, there's that. So, okay, those questions, we're good with questions, right? Let's see. Um, the 400 rule is above an object. Yes. Um, in my current application, um, the way I edited a little bit, I did put 400 feet, and this is in the application uh, area uh, where you want to fly, 400 feet within the 400 foot bubble, and then up to US UASFM limits. So yes, it is. You can do that. Um, it's just it doesn't give you an option in the actual waiver, so you can put that in your um, in your uh, uh, safety waiver waiver safety explanations. Your waste sakes. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, good, good, good. Um, but, 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 I think we answered that, Edward. Yeah, the the um, and also flying at night. Uh, if you put a strobe on there, it'll definitely bump it up as well. That's why I have three hundred and eighty grams, three hundred and eighty five in my new waiver uh, modification application. Okay, so let's go to share screen, and now we'll go back to the PDFs. Where are we? Do, 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 do. Acrobat. That's what I want to share. Okay. Um, oh, you know, before we do that, I wanted to do something else. So I'm going to go back to Google Chrome. I'm going to quit sharing this. I apologize. I even made, I even made myself notes here and I'm not following them. So <laughs> welcome to the world of OCD. Um, hey, I'm stocked to there. Good. Let's go back to the, uh, to the PDF I pulled up because that's the important part. When it comes to what you're going to do, these are the questions the FA wants you to answer. You know, explain why, and describe your intention, provide details. If you're using a parachute, do that. What I do on any waiver I've done, any waiver I will do, is I literally copy and paste Are these you? questions. Wait a second, we don't see questions. Oh dear, did I not? Am I not doing the right thing? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm we sorry. can I'm see sorry. your your pretty face and not this not a share. Oh, well, we don't want we don't want to do that. Let's try share. Let's try sharing the screen again. Okay, um, Google Chrome. Now you see it. Oh, it's looking good now. Yay! Thanks. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Okay, one of these days I'll figure all this stuff out. Okay, back to where we were. Under the, um, you click this link right here. It takes you to this PDF. Hey, Vic, you were just saying you copy and paste. I assume you copy the questions and then copy you edit, the question. Then you edit the answers. Am I? Bingo. That... Yes. Yes. I will get to that. Thank you, though. We do. That is very important. Do not copy and paste my waiver uh, application because you will not be accepted. Very few people know this waiver. Very few people in the waiver office do these waivers and they know my waiver because my waiver is setting the goal or setting the standard for other waivers. They actually told me that. So if you copy and paste like, well, this is Vic's waiver. You didn't do your homework. So this is going to get denied. So do not copy and paste. And do copy and paste the questions. I'm sorry, what? I said, that's always been the case. Even way back. It's always the been the case. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I did probably 100 10729 waivers back in the day and every single one of them was different which makes it really difficult because you're all saying the same thing at the same time, but it is difficult. Copy and paste all these questions, including the questions for 107, 145, onto, uh, I'm on a Mac, so I use pages, you can use Word, you can use whatever uh, word processing application you want, but do that first, okay? So copy all the questions, paste the questions onto your, your application, and now I'm gonna stop sharing that, and now we'll go to, if I do this right, Acrobat. Now you're seeing the now you're seeing Acrobat, right? Yes. Yes. Give me enough times, and I will eventually get this right. Okay. So as I said, these are the waiver safety explanations for one hundred seven four five. That's just how it, it it ends up that way. I went ahead, and I'm going to do um, 
10739 first because that's where all the meat is. Again, I I, wrote, I post pasted the question and then I'm going to go ahead and answer it according to what I'm going to do. Um, I won't go over all of this because it is in the 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 uh, um, the, the uh, uh, explanations that you get that you can download. And I also actually have a separate, and I know you're not going to be able to see this right off the top, but um, I'm going to copy and paste. Whoops, go away. I'm going to copy and paste this into the chat. And I uploaded this morning a new um, link for the a little bit more simplified uh, the waiver and some of the other stuff that we go through. Um, so we don't need that. So let me get rid of something I opened up accidentally. Okay, so I don't need pages anymore. Okay, good. So now I'm back to this, right? You're seeing the Acrobat. So like I said, you've got, this is the second question. Describe in detail, safety mitigation, safety case. And I spelled safety case wrong. Oh, well, um, I have one, two, you yeah, have a normal mode. I have semi mode and each one of these modes I have, uh, four different. I've got standard battery in both, extended battery in both, with the with the strobe and without the strobe. So there's actually eight different different calculations on kinetic energy. You do not have to put all of this stuff in here exactly as this. You can just say, you know, for the standard battery, it's only it's only going to do 11.99 foot pounds. Um, the biggest one here is the uh, extended battery. Where am I? Um, the extended battery with firehouse strobes at 10 meters per second, that's the maximum kinetic energy that's out there. And so my application for the the, the, um, the Mini 4 Pro, I have 381 grams and it's 14.198. So it's a very small increase in kinetic energy. So it should actually go ahead and be accepted. Uh, that's my plan. Um, and just go through this. The other thing I did in my application is I've got my original application is I'm going to fly 50 feet above people. Um, after flying a little bit and doing a little bit more, I figured that was a little too conservative. And I've asked for 25 feet now. 25 feet actually is, a, is an improvement in that I'm only measuring horizontal kinetic energy in my in my uh, application. And and maybe 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 David can do this in his head, but the the. Um, when you're dealing with vertical kinetic energy and um, um, transference, there are way, way, way too many variables. How high are you? Um, how fast? What's your what's your terminal velocity? Um, are you falling like this? Are you falling like this? So, and I put it in there. This is just horizontal based on, and it's also based with a rigid object. Last time I checked, at least physically, most humans are not rigid. Um, some of them are mentally but um yeah, it's and not, uh it, and not not solid not a solid mass so this last is, yeah, i checked this, most this of is, us are not <laughs> yeah, this, this, the, the, the faa continues on uh, uh kinetic yep, energy yep. is just uh, just a travesty yeah well yeah. we're better okay. than this <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there we won't go there but yeah they the and the, and the fa understands that some of these are, are interesting um uh criteria to me but this is the point of the waivers um, the FAA waiver office actually asked me to do this waiver when I was flying uh, inside the Denver Convention Center at the uh, EOVSI Exponential here in Denver in May. Um, they came to me and said, why don't you apply for a waiver with what you're doing? I said, well, it's over 250 grams. And he goes, that's why you need to apply for a waiver. So I had a real big dumb moment right in front of the FAA. Um, and he goes, let me know when you do. We'll get it. We'll check it out. Give me a good safety case. And then they're using this waiver. It's not a summary grant waiver type situation, but if your waiver looks like my waiver, they will grant it for you. Um, so it's really it's really neat to be able to work with waiver office like that and an honor uh, really that they would trust me with something like that. So I'm pretty happy with that. Go through, and again, it's a big safety case, right? All this fun stuff. Um, and one um, thing, it, go ahead. On this information that you're just showing, Quick, quick question. Why did you specify Cine mode? Cine mode limits the, the speed in the Mavic 3. Dang it, Mini 3. In any <laughs> any fly app mode, no matter what, Cine mode does limit your speed to 10 meters per second. So that's why I did that. Um, that was just a really nice, hey, you can't fly faster than this in Cine mode. Um, and if I'm over a crowd, one of my safety mitigations is as you read this, um, it will be in Cine mode. 
So that's that's really why I did that. If I'm not over a crowd, I'm just over slow uh, individuals, that kind of thing. Um, it's a little faster if I remember correctly. Um, so read through my safety mitigations. I did. Um, and then this last one, which actually should have a four on it. Um, I'm not using a parachute, NA. Don't leave any question unanswered because if it's unanswered, they're going to say, why didn't you answer this question? If it's not applicable, not applicable. So in, in, you know, write this out in Word, in whatever. Do not copy and paste mine. I'll say that again. Go, ahead, you know, go through the safety map application or uh, mitigations. Write them according in your own language. Use the criteria I'm using. Use the, the, the kinetic energy I'm using. But all you have to do is do the summaries. You don't, and you can't, you can, you can do, hey, this is what I did. This is what, you know, this is, I'm going to apply this, 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 and this at this speed. You can do that if you want, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. You just say, you know, at, at 10 meters per second, this is a kinetic energy, blah, 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 blah. You can do that. Um, operational parameters. This is where I change things up just a little bit in my, uh, in my uh, application. Start date, I put two months. Um, I'm guessing at this point, it's either going to be two or two and a half, maybe even three, because they are so busy. Um, the FAA waiver office and the airspace uh, contractors are, are mandated by, by congressional caveat that they can't have people jump the queue. So it's, if you're at the top of the list, you're going in. If you're, and when you go in, you're at the bottom of the list, period. You can't have them push it up. Uh, they're not allowed to do that, uh, unfortunately, but they can't. Um, so two months from application, um, once it's granted, they'll change that. If they, if they grant it in four weeks, they'll change that. So don't worry about that. They're not going to say, okay, you can't do it for two months from now. They give you that. As soon as it's granted, they give you that start date. Um, end date right now, mine is for uh, December 31st, 2027. So it is a four-year, almost three, a little over three years now at this point, um, waiver, which is awesome, which leads me to believe, and this is pure speculation by Vic Moss, um, that by 2027, we will not need the waivers. The purpose of so many people getting this waiver is so the FAA can get the data to prove that we can fly safely under these conditions. FAA lives and dies by data. Um, and Diana will back me up on this to the hilt. <laughs> and so will lots of other people in this call. Um, data, 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 data. That's what they want. Um, and they want specific data. So they're going to be using these, just like in the 10729 daylight waivers, they're going to be using these types of waivers to get the data to say, look, we can fly Let's say we're maybe we bump 250 to 500 grams, stuff like that. I don't know what that looks like down the road. I'm just guessing at this point. So proposed location, all of controlled and uncontrolled airspace, where SUAS are permitted. Um, and then if it takes place in controlled airspace, you may not use LANTs to include a waiver. You have to go through the airspace authorization uh, in the drone zone. It, it, you can't do that. Um, you just can't. And Lance is not equipped to do that. So, um, and here also it says um, proposed flight. This is what uh, somebody mentioned about the 400 foot. 400 foot AGL within the 400 foot radius of structures in class G airspace or up to UASFM limits. I did not include being able to apply, fly over the UASFM limits in the waiver because then that would be included in the application for the uh, airspace authorization. So I'm not including it in the waiver. You don't have to, you can say, I will, you know, if I'm going to do an authorization, I'll include it in the waiver, that kind of stuff. Uh, real quick now, we'll go over the waivers. Um, this is my waiver. Every waiver out there has the standard provisions, including which two very important things. This certificate, the holder of this certificate, which is you, it, it's your butt. <laughs> if something goes wrong, no matter who's flying, no matter where it is, it is your fanny. Uh, in the hot seat if something goes wrong, which is why I will not let anybody fly under my waiver. Um, there is a situation I may be flying, I may be r picked with somebody else flying, uh, manipulating the controls. It's a very special project I get to work on here next month, um, which I can't talk about just yet, but it is in DC. So I'm real excited about that, fly inside the FRZ for a very special project, uh, which will happen one of these days. Um, and also here, you have to carry this with you, folks, presented upon inspection. So if you get ramp checked, you better have this with you. These are some more special provisions. Um, and again, this is this is actually publicly available. You can go to the waiver waivers granted website and um, download this. But or you can just go to the link I sent you and download it for free. 
Uh, well, it's for free anyway. Um, I have to use a VO and I'm totally kosher with that. Uh, I, I want a VO. I want a VO just about every time I can, but especially with ops over people, you really need a VO with you. For my flight at CSU, I actually had two VOs with me. There were two flying. We had five other folks up there. So technically, I had anywhere from one to five VOs, depending on how many times we were flying, which was really cool. One of the VOs was, one of their job was strictly to watch the scoreboard because the control center didn't tell us when we were live. So we're just sitting there flying around and you know watching the sky and making sure we're safe. And it was that VO's first say, hey, you're live. Don't screw up. Um, so we did that. That was their job, their sole jobs. Okay, you're live, Vic, don't screw up, um, which does put you under a little pressure. That's okay, though. But all these things, um, just go through these. There are things you'll need to do. Um, you will have to have a pre-flight, which you should anyway in a situation like this. You should anyway, technically. I mean, it is part of 107. Um, most of us just do it in our head, uh, honestly. Um, all these different things go through all of these different special provisions in the waiver, because this will be what you have to do for the most part. Um, if you're going to use radios, they have to be full duplex, which means two and two, you know, both, both ways, which I found out last at the last webinar. It's like, what the heck does full duplex mean? Um, and it has to be hands-free. Um, I have a very nice set of, of, of uh, um, uh, air, air, uh, headphones with mics on it. Uh, works out really well. A couple things here. Um, ADSB out, you may not use. That's standard provision, actually. Um, and here is where I have the 380 gram part, which I'm going to try to bump up to 385 grams. So that's for the Mini 4 Pro. Um, I'm, the Mini, the, the drone itself is an extra three grams, and I haven't weighed the prop cages, but since it's over five, I'm assuming, or it's five more, I'm assuming the prop cages for the Mini 4 weigh an extra two grams. Uh, I missed one I want to talk about, and let me see if I can find it. Um, it's a stupid one, uh, but and it's also part of what I'm trying to get um, waived in my modification. Well, I can't find it, but basically it means if I'm flying in G airspace, I have to file a notum. Um, I'm trying to get that removed because this waiver with any hope will be more and more and more and more people. And so if we're going to file a notum, Every time we fly, plus it's a 24 to 72 hour notum. So I can't show up on site and go, oh, there's people. I can't fly over them. Um, that was kind of the point of the waiver, too. So I can fly over people when I'm on site and something happens. Uh, and it's only 4G airspace, which I found out why later. But when I first got this, like, that's a mistake. Why would they want to note them in G airspace? I did not point that out to them because if it was a mistake, I didn't want it fixed. <laughs> but um, if it's if in G, you know, if you're flying in controlled airspace, people already know you're there. My not only will filing NOTAMs with all the people who have this waiver really cramp up the NOTAM system uh, for, for traditional aviation, which they're already complaining about, like in LA, that all the drone NOTAMs that are required. Um, we already have that separation, right? We have the 400-foot ceiling. They have the 500-foot floor under most circumstances. Um, so it's unnecessary. So I tried to get them to, uh, to go ahead and remove that uh, in my waiver application. So once you do all of this, and under 107145, actually, I should probably do that real quick. Um, it's basically very similar to the 10739 uh, safety mitigations. Um, but basically, if you qualify for category two, three, or four, or one, um, you can fly over moving vehicles, uh, technically, the people inside moving vehicles. So that was my justification for getting the 107145. It's like if you're going to give me the waiver to fly over people, then I should automatically include in that waiver the, the ability to fly over moving vehicles because in the standard language, it's the same. And so in a waiver language, it should also be the same. So hopefully that uh, answers that. And before we go back, I'm going to see if we've got any questions. Um, can, you clarify, da -da -da -da. can you clarify really quick, like what you just said about the uh, flying over the people in that moving vehicle. <laughs> the word, the, the, the title of, of 107145 is Operations Over Moving Vehicles. If you read the first sentence in 107145, it says moving over the people, persons inside moving vehicles. Um, and this is very confusing online and it's it, 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 it's a little pedantic, but the FAA is all about pedanticism. Is that a word? Um, and so the, 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 the example I use is um, being a good Southern boy. If you're at a truck mud event and um, 
you're flying over a pickup truck with nobody in the back, it's perfectly legal. If you fly over the person inside the cab of the pickup truck, it's fine. If you're flying over um, uh, somebody in a convertible, that's only the driver, you can fly over the passenger side. Uh, and moving vehicle is not just cars, bicycles, boats, trains, unicycles. If it's a, if it's a vehicle and it trans and people move in it, it's a moving vehicle. So it's not just, it's not just cars. Um, Kevin Worth says it's at LK to add a module to us manufacturers. Yes. Um, we'll, we won't get into that, David, but you're right. Um, there is, you can use, yeah, we won't get into that, but yeah, make sure you understand the rules for remote ID. Um, there are a lot of them. Um, but there are also a whole lot of, of, um, workarounds point, uh, and including the, the deferred enforcement at the moment. Uh, have you gotten a hint from Manor where the threshold is? I do not know where the threshold is. I, and it wouldn't come from, you know, I don't know who, who it would come from, the waiver office possibly, but um, I don't know what that hint is. And odds are they're not going to tell us, uh, unfortunately. So if they do, then the waiver office is set in policy and that's not their job. So um, at some point, yeah, I'd love to see what that, that is. Kicking up, kick up the weight instead of the speed. There, you yeah, pick up the weight instead of the speed, um, or if you're FA and you've got 150 gram, pick up the kick up the speed. No, no. Uh, what I'm saying is that the kinetic energy increases with the square of the velocities. So increase your weight, and it will increase. It'll increase your kinetic energy in a linear manner, not by low, the square. Slower. Right, right. That's yeah, good way to put it. Um, and, and that's definitely that's definitely a David statement right there. Um, you're right. You're right. It, the 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 ex, the the it's yeah. It's just the square of the velocity is is goofy. Um, so if you're going to bump it up, bump up the bump up the weight. Right. Um, what's that's the most opti optimistic thing I've heard about regulatory agency. I'm not sure what that refers to, <laughs> but um, uh, I'm sure the FA is uh, is very happy to hear that somebody's optimistic about that. Audrey was referring to when you were saying maybe by 2027. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? 10729. Look how quickly that the um, um, that happened. Uh, so, I mean, quickly in FAA terms. So that's that's probably good. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Um, so what, what are you going to do with all this once you write it all out in your own language and not copy and paste mine is you're going to copy everything. Um, so I will start. Let me see if I'm, I'm still logged on in the uh, uh, and, and I'm going to check here real quick. Oh, my session has expired. You can't see it. OK, I'm going to log on real quick and then I'll go back and and start sharing that screen again. I agree. There I am. Dashboard, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So stop sharing that one. And now I'm going to share the back to my drone zone. Okay. So y'all can see my drone zone, right? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, look, I even have to show you what I'm saying. Okay. So remember when I said you need to, oh gosh, I hope it saved a draft. When uh, I said you need to um, name the, the, the drone or name the, the waiver, click on your drafts. And if I did this right, hey, there it is. These are your drafts, okay? And there it is right there, WAD, Women and Drones. So you click on that. Um, it takes you back through some of the pages again. You click Next. This is where you start to copy and paste. Your waiver safety explanations. Um, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to go back to um, my uh, um, real quick. Where is it? There it is. Can I do this? Is it going to let me? Oh, there it goes. I know you can't see, but what I'm doing is I'm just copying from the uh, from the waiver safety explanation, and then you just paste it in there. Boom. You don't need this part. Actually, you don't need any of these because that's what's listed right there. That's just from my um, waiver safety explanation. Here's the question, and here's my here's my explanation. Here's the question. Here's my explanation. And again, don't not answer a question. It's very important you do not answer a question. Now, if you want, you can just write in prose form this nice letter to the FAA about why you want to do this waiver. But really, um, I've been told by many that the best way to do it is you ask the question that's in the WSEGs, and then you answer the question in the WSEGs. That makes the waiver, officers, the waiver office person's job easier. And our goal when we write these things is to make the waiver person Office person's job easier. So you do that with 107, do not, uh, 41145, 10739. Uh, your start date, again, you'll start two months out. And your end date, um, it won't let you actually go all the way to 2027. But you go to December 31st, 
as far as it'll let you, and they will change the end date once it's granted. Uh, again, here's proposed altitude. Um, you're not going to have any existing waivers with this one because it's a brand new waiver. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and paste everything in here. It's not going to be the right thing. Um, I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's Halloween, isn't it? What am I doing, dummy? It doesn't matter. Anyway, so I'm just going to put whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. Because it doesn't matter in this particular thing. You'll click next. Then you'll... I did something wrong. It won't let you move until you until you do something right. What am I doing wrong? Oh, oh, no. I, I got to see you got... Don't leave anything unanswered, right? The FAA, the website, will not you let you move on until you're done, until you did everything right. So then you click next and you review it. Um, you can, oh, oh, this is where you add your device. I apologize. This is where you add your device. If you do not have a device yet, because you can fill this out without having a Mini 4 or a Mini 3, you just click through it, click next. If you do have it, you go ahead and add it to it because you do need to have a list of drones that fly underneath that, which we'll talk about also in just a second. I know we're running out of time. Um, so you just review your waiver application and then hit submit. I will not hit submit because this is not a real waiver application. And then you get a notice from the FAA said, thank you. See you in three months. No, it's not what it says. But um, you, and you just go through every once in a while. Um, back to your, I'll get rid of that because if I hit, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to hit it. I know I'm going to hit it by mistake and I'm going to get the, the waiver office going to get mad at me. Um, you'll go through and you can check your submitted waivers. Okay. And it's still submitted. Once they review it, it'll go under review, and then it'll go under granted or approved. So again, my waiver modification, here's the, this is it. This is the extent of my waiver modification. Now, I had to reach out to the waiver office yesterday because I realized I screwed up on this. I have a typo. Current is 14.01 uh, foot pounds. The new one is 14.198 foot pounds. And so I reached out and I said, hey, Steve, I, I screwed up. Can you, what do I need to do? He goes, I'll just put a note in your file. I did have the right increase in kinetic energy, but I missed the little one. I didn't put a little one right here. Um, and that makes a huge difference in the application. They will check your math. When I first did the first, when I did the first application, I was contacted by the waiver office and said, looks good, but you have a typo. You need to fix this because you have the wrong number. So they will check your math. Um, they have engineers to check the math. So that is that. Um, I will stop sharing and I will. Oh, that's me. Hi, me. Um, I'm and not going to share. Have Dave Messina working on checking math. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dave, it is foot dash pounds, not foot slash pounds. You're right. You're right. Um, if we're getting pedantic, and like I said, yes, the FA likes pedantic. Ped pedanticism, is that the word I made up? Um, can you share contact for the waiver office? I will not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have all kinds, and Dave does too, all kinds of contacts. Um, and I know others do that that we can't share, unfortunately. I'd love to, I'd love to say reach out. Um, but no, it's um yes, Audrey, it is Audrey, sorry, it is complicated, but um it's not that hard if you slow down and don't do it as fast as I talked about it. And yes, there is a link. Uh the link, I think the links of where am I over here somewhhere um, that Desi already put in does give you a uh, video. Also and a lot again, longer if we try to do this without your tips and techniques, Vic. So oh yeah. Really, oh yeah. Really much appreciated. Well, it's, it's my, it, and I love doing this kind of stuff. Um, it's not entirely uh, um, out of goodwill because this helps me, but Kenji and I both do this type of stuff because we feel a uh, rising tide lifts all boats and we want to be able to um, get this going. Uh, a couple other quick things I will say before we open up to Q&A with 12 minutes left. Sorry, I almost did it. Oh, well. um, is practice, okay? Uh, the, the drones fly differently with the prop cages on them, uh, especially in wind. Uh, when I did the Chili Factory, Chili Factory, the Chili uh, Festival, uh, it was windy. It was flat windy. Um, and uh, I went off the side and uh, put it up in an empty parking lot. And my wife was my VO and the guy I was with was my VO. And um, it flew okay. It flew safe. If it had been much windier, I would have said we can't do it. Uh, but it flew. It flew pretty well. And so we went ahead and did it. We flew over the crowd down the down the midway. Um, and we also told the cops that what we're doing, which was funny because the Pueblo cops said, "We well, don't care." 
a lot, a lot, a lot of police officers aren't like that, and also private security. Um, uh, will if they're there, they've been told if there's a drone up, they need to shut it down, especially the events that have thousands and thousands of people at them. Um, when I flew the in the uh, not the NFL game, I wish, um, the uh, division one football game, I was incredibly nervous, literally, where I was shaking, flying. Um, and when I flew out over the field the first time, um, when I came to a stop, it porpoised. So the drone did this, and I had a little, um, uh, a little moment there when I thought, oh, crud. Uh, but worst case scenario, if something does happen, it falls out of the sky and hits somebody, that's what the waiver's for. You've proven that it's a safe waiver. I hope and I pray that no one ever has to figure that part out. Um, but uh, yes, the, 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 uh, um, the, the uh, uh, password is DSPAOOP2023. And I think, yes, Desi put that in there. Uh, not DSPA poop, DSPAOOP. Um, 2023. So any more questions? Um, and uh, there's, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I'm going I just made the yes, point sir. that you did, you did a similar um, piece of work with Gen Player uh, for BV Lost that's in the, the AC uh, ebook mm -hmm. and really great piece of work as well. We tried with that as well. Absolutely. So um, our next waiver, like I mentioned, and the FA says they will grant it to me and Kenji. This will be, this will be a both of us are going to do the waiver at the same time. Uh, for those of you who are interested, is an EV loss waiver. Um, so we'll keep your fingers crossed on that, and uh, it'll be out two miles. Um, so that's the plan on that, and that'll help ag, that'll help mapping, uh, that type of stuff immensely. So this waiver is a very useful waiver. Um, it's limiting in some aspects in that you are limited as to what you can use. Uh, one thing I love about the uh, if I get the Mini 4 Pro is it does have D-Log, which is going to be huge. Um, and uh, hopefully we won't have to do the notums. So that's where I'm at. And um, a whole nine minutes left for actual Q&A. Awesome. So many, so many great points that you brought up. Really I hope, hope everybody caught it. <laughs> well, good news. It's yes, recorded. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yay, yes. And if you have any questions, I was going to say reach out. I will reach if you say you're on the DSPA website or uh, web, uh, whatever this is called. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Connection. Thank you, yes, everybody, for being here. Um, uh, mention you were here. Uh, my email is super easy. I'll put it in here real quick. Um, if I can type. We actually and I will answer them for you. If it's in the waiver application, I will say, look at the application. But if you have a specific question, I just I just can't answer everybody's email. I'm sorry to say I would love to, uh, but I can't. Um, Chanel asked about what is the math formula? And if I remember, mm. didn't you put a link in there? There is a link in the um, and I'm going to check real quick to make sure I put it in the other ones. Okay. And, and, and I, won't, I won't share this. It's going to look funny because I'm staring at the computer. But um, do I still have it up? Oh, I still have it up. In the, oh, the other things I did, um, and you know what? I am going to share real quick. Um, one more quick thing. The, uh, um, I think you will need an operational manual. This is also in there in the, in the link I have. Here's my waiver. Maintenance log also. You will need that as part of one of your provisions. What aircraft you keep under it. I'm, I'm really optimistic. I have room for 12. <laughs> we'll see if I get that. And then the application again, I actually don't have the, in this particular set, I don't have the, uh, the, the websites I was using. But if you go to the DSPA article, in that particular download set, there is the websites that I use for calculating energy. Or you just look up, I went from mass and velocity to joules and then joules to foot pounds. Yeah, that's a better way to do it because then you don't have to do a conversion and take gravity out because right. you know, we work we we don't work in mass and uh, imperial units we work in weight. Yep, yep. So that I, I tried to find one where I could go velocity <laughs> and mass to kinetic energy. It's like nah, that's nope. So I did both, but it is in the other uh, uh, in the DSPA. Uh, Desi has a link in there um, to our article, and it's the same. DSPA OOP twenty twenty three is the. Um, password and the okay. stuff i'm going to put out at the end of the week is not going to be password protected and we'll make sure that that goes out to everybody okay. but do put it in if you're going to do it do it this week because i got a funny feeling the waiver office is going to be inundated next week right and you'll go into that queue 
and you'll be way down on the list. Way down the list of over 300 at this point. I should have asked, darn it, when I reached out to the waiver office, I should have asked how many are in the queue. Now, it's not all ops over people waivers. Um, there are tons of other waivers out there, um, but the uh, ops over people waiver is uh, uh, is a good one to get. Um, and if you want to push, if you want to push the boundaries, try for an Air 2S, try for a, a, an Avada, um, use an Autel, use an FPV. Um, just remember, you've got to have remote ID. So it's got to, if you have to have remote ID to, be, to put a bird in the air right now, if you're capable. And I say if you're capable because of the discretionary uh, enforcement order. And then go to that article and get that conversion table because not all of us are as great at math as you are and you are David. Me? No, David is. <laughs> Remember, I have an art degree. I have an art degree. <laughs> so and now, to, for, in all honesty, I, I was at George Mason studying physics and English in a dual degree and I decided I didn't want to do that for a living. So yeah. ended up with an art degree. Go figure. And Carolyn asked a great question here. How do you report where you want to fly? I do not. Oh, for for um, for a notum, you have to have a uh, um, an account with 800wxbrief.com, 1-800wxbrief.com, whatever it is. Um, and then you upload your waiver because you have to have a waiver to tie into the notum. And once that's accepted, usually a couple, three days, then you just go in and there's a U.S. and uh, U.S. notum, U.S. drotum whatever it's a uh, tab yeah, it's, it's they, they don't call it a drotum um i think they're getting away from that word uh okay. but it's a it's a uas notum um and uh it, it's it's one of the drop down tabs underneath that and i don't have time to go through the whole 800 uas right no that's a different one 800 wx brief uh website but yeah it's 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 a, it's a weird website and it's a pain in the butt to use but it, they, they do walk you through it i still when i file a notum i have that always screw up the the location i have to change it two or three times I have a, a quick question, if you could sure, uh, sure. get to it. Um, Vic, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to do sure. this. Uh, long time listener, first time caller here. So uh, <laughs> I have um, a question about the Mavic Mini 3 body. Uh, have, <clears throat> what we've experimented with is removing some of the panels to compensate for the extra weight that the, Ooh. to compensate for some of the extra weight that comes up with, with adding the prop guards to be able to sure. fly under category uh, one. Category one, right. Yeah. Uh, have you experimented with that at all? We've been able to remove enough panels and add prop guards to the point where I we... Haven't. Also, I've looked into the far aim. I don't know if maybe you have some insight on this. I've looked into the far aim as well to see if there's anything under 107 saying, are you allowed to uh, change or, or reconfigure the way that the drone is built from the manufacturer? I couldn't find anything that says anything. I, haven't, that. I haven't heard of anything. Uh, I wish Diana was still here. I'm not sure she still is. But... Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, if, you know, it would, it would you'd void, void your warranty. I'll tell you that right now. Yes, it, it, that. It, it would, uh, it but would. no, it, it's, it's all about weight. I don't think if it's, if it's airworthy, um, I wouldn't do it, but I fly in a lot of construction sites. So the last thing I want inside of my drone is dust and dirt, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why that wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, I'm not a fan of taking them apart, but I'm not, I'm not a mechanical guy. Um, when we yeah, were doing but, naked GoPros, I took one apart and scared the hell out of me. Heck out of me. Sorry. Yeah, we 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 we've experimented with that. We've been able to pull off enough panels to where we can. That's awesome. Where where we can use a Mavic Mini three and uh, add some prop guards and shave off some of the um, some of the structural parts of the prop guards, but the props are still encased. But it still keeps it at two hundred forty nine. Tops out at two forty nine. That uh, David does put a good point. It it does reduce some of the structural strength. So um, I wouldn't put it in sport mode and fly it at thirty five miles an hour and yeah, then turn no, abruptly. <laughs> But that wouldn't be what you're doing with it anyway. So yeah, no, so no, you know, no. it's it's always it's always a, a taking a give and take. Absolutely, but that's a good idea. It's a great idea. You should put you should put a video up telling how you did it. Sure. Thank Hint, you. Hint. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Quick question, uh, Big. It, your uh, over people waiver with the with the mini series. Uh, obviously, you're not using a parachute for that. In right. your opinion, is that is that the only sort of a uh, model? That uh, you will not that you will do the the, the process without putting a parachute on, or do you? Um, you might look at the, the, for? the smaller hotels. Um, you would have to do your own weights on that. I have the light plus. I think that's uh, going to be close to the same. Uh, the issue is prop guards. I'm not sure hotel puts out a prop guard for that. I'd have to double check. I'm not a fan of OEM prop guards. Um, and again, that's just I because my question is, what will be. 
I I guess my question was, what will be your 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 max weight where you will go? Okay, after this weight, we'll definitely need a parachute. Let's say a Mavic Three, for example. Oh, Mavic Three, absolutely parachute. There are uh, one hundred seven three nine waivers for the Mavic Three with parachutes, um, and so that you I, don't know, I think it's the Mavic Three. Uh, John Dube has one, and I believe it is the Mavic Three with the parachute. I don't know what that cutoff is. Um, mm -hmm. It would be totally up to you, and you would still have to use the um, operational waiver stuff supplied by the parachute person or parachute company in your in your application. But it is it is an accepted mitigation under certain circumstances. Yeah, I, again, my, just to be a pest here. Uh, That's okay. Cause, just because I, I we I've been researching, I have not seen an ASMT an ASTM clients uh parachute for Mavic threes unless do you uh, know I a company that has zero. Oh, is this I not, thought Parazero zero not, had one. They have it for a Mavic two. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, it's not the Mavic three. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it, that it, is still a John's would be the Mavic two. Is that a still uh, a requirement you, for waivers or any parachute uh, might do the trick? What do you think? Oh, if, if, if you know, if you do, if they don't have the ASTM standard set up already uh, in their parachute system, um, you're going to have to do all the testing on it, which means you have to test failure rates. You have to test all the kinetic energies, all that stuff, which means you have to deploy a parachute so many times. So it's going to be pretty expensive for you to do that uh, to prove that it's safe. Um, so at this point, uh, you can try some of the larger DJI drones without a parachute, but if you're adding a parachute as a safety mitigation, you have to prove that the kinetic energy is not an exorbitant amount, uh, when it hits somebody. And that's going to be very difficult, very expensive, and very time consuming. Unfortunately. Question. Does that answer your question? Yeah. That answers my question. Or the, awesome. if, if you ever know of a... A parachute that's in market for Mavic threes with AS yeah. uh, TM. Just feel free. Yeah, exactly. I would look at parachute or pair zero, and then also, um, does Fruity Shoot still around? I was going to say Fruity Shoots is a guest speaker coming up. So, oh, <laughs> good segue. Puppy <laughs> <laughs> connection. <laughs> awesome. Yes, and so, and that's kind of what they're going to be covering. So, join Dynamite. us. Segment. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be a good one. All right. So I just wanted to let everybody know it really is after 10 o'clock. I know, Caroline, you just uh, said I had a question. Um, sure. So, and Vic, I know. I can stay if y'all can stay. It's up yeah. to you. I don't, have to, I don't have to leave another hour and a half for a shoot out in the cold and the snow and the yuck. Awesome. Caroline, do you cool. want to ask your question? Yes. So your waiver, that's for an operation or for, I want to use my drone for flying over people anytime, you know. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, okay, perfect. That's, anytime, that's anywhere that a waiver can fly. Uh, all of cool. Class G um, and Class uh, controlled airspace with, with permission, obviously with Lance or an airspace authorization. Um, and then if I need to fly above Lance, um, like when I did the zero grid at, at, in Vegas, that has to then go through the airspace authorization and you attach the waiver to the airspace authorization. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna make a really quick suggestion. Even mm -hmm. if right now you're not planning to operate that way, Get that ball rolling. Get it. Get it. You you'll be into that queue, but you would hate to say no. I don't have it when that job or opportunity does come up. Well, once you get it, I suggest if you know once you get the waiver, go to DGI.com or or you know Blue Sky Drones um, and uh, buy one. Uh, if, if you if the if opportunity pops up, you can say yes, and not many people will be able to. And once you get that waiver and you have the drone to fly with it, let others in your area know, because that way, if they do get a job, I can't do it. But hey, talk to George, talk to Mary. They have a waiver, they have the drone, um, and they can do it for you. So not only is it good for your business, it's good for the community because then you can meet other drone pilots. But let them know, let them know you had it. Awesome. Yes. So, okay, with that, we're going to wrap it up because it is after 10 o'clock. Vic, we cannot thank you enough. Well, thank you. So much valuable information. This has been amazing. Yes, hey. we do have a replay available. Johnny does that. Again, a shout out to Johnny. And <laughs> we look forward to seeing everybody in the future. Thank you for being yep. here for our Tuesdays. We love it. Thank you for sharing the information, Vic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have Thanks, everybody. Nice thank you, Vic. All right. Thanks, Vic. Be good. Now, come on.
<laughs> Everybody fly safe. Bye-bye. Fly safe. Bye, everybody. That kind of wraps it up.